And greetings and welcome to our weekly educational round here at Seclair. Today you may think that you've gone through the rabbit hole if you're viewing this podcast. However, uh, let me be assured that we're the same gang and I'm the same person. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair. And today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... My name is Alex. I'm a PA student from Duquesne University. And on my right... I'm Lauren. I'm also a PA student from Seton Hill University. So quite often what we do here at Seclair, of course, uh, it's an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people, not necessarily diagnoses. And quite often when we walk through our life, things are a matter of perspective, are they not? Yep. A matter of perspective. From sure. where from where you view things, from what your perspective is of things. So for those of you who perhaps have viewed this podcast in the past have gone over some pack ones, but perhaps you do know that occasionally we shake things up just a little bit. So when you're viewing this podcast from your perspective, if you were walking into a behavioral health therapist's office or a clinical psychologist or a psychiatrist or an MD and uh, the nurses and the doctors were dressed like this and they said, come in and have a seat, uh, how, uh, how confident would you in their, be in their ability to, to deal with you? I don't know. I might be a little scared. Might be a little afraid. You might uh, be thinking that perhaps uh, you might want to go somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. So what we're doing, what we're doing here today, is what we're going to do is we're going to talk about emotional sobriety. So you might be wondering if somebody, if, if the three of us were walking down the street during Mardi Gras, you might say that we might be the under the influence of some mind altering substance. Would you not? Yep. Okay. So let's take these off, and when we when we take them off. If we, uh, when we don't have these on, does it change your perspective? If you'd have started this podcast and you'd have seen us like this, would have changed your perspective? Although all we did was have wigs on, okay? That didn't change our personality, that, that, that didn't change our uh, intelligence or our wisdom or experience, did it? It did not. Okay. So when we, when we talk about emotional sobriety, so when we talk about uh, sobriety, Lauren, what does sobriety, what does the word sobriety mean to you? Being free from using substances or objects mm -hmm. to cope with emotions. Sure. So when we're under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or some type of influence, let's say like gambling or stealing or that type of things, how, how do we behave? Like that is the most important thing and we need to get that in whatever way we can. Mm -hmm. So how are your decisions usually generally when people are the, under the influence of other mind-altering substances? Usually poor. Usually poor. Poor. Okay, so here it's a clear, and I'd like everyone out there, simply simply when we remove the substance, when we remove the alcohol, we remove the gambling, we remove the drugs, we remove the uh, steal, we remove the excessive shopping, you still have that person, do you not? Mm hmm Okay, so some people view sobriety as merely abstinence or the absence of these other substances, right? So think of, think of some things in your life that perhaps influence you. Think of some things that you're influenced by in your life that cause your thoughts, feelings, behaviors, and actions to maybe different than what you would normally would be in your life. Okay, so uh, what we're going to talk a little bit about today is how what is emotional sobriety and how could we possibly how could we possibly achieve it. So what uh, what are the signs that someone is emotionally sober, Alex? They are able to live in the present moment, not worrying about the past or planning too far into the future and just live where they are right now, right oh. here, right now. Okay. Um, they have an ability to regulate their behavior. Hmm. So what, what, do you, what does a person mean by regulating behavior, uh, Laura? Uh, maybe not acting instinctually on your first emotion, but being able to identify and address your emotions so you're not immediately acting upon them. Sure. Has anybody ever told you, calm down? Yep. Anybody told you, don't get excited? Those type of things, mm -hmm. right? That's easy to say, isn't it? So, how, well, you've been here at the Seclair, given our philosophy, how do we help people regulate, regulate emotions? By identifying and labeling them. Identifying and labeling. Say a little bit more about identifying and labeling, Alex. So when you're able to identify and label your emotions, you're able to better control them and handle them. If you can't identify it, you don't know what it is you're feeling, 
it, you'll never be able to control it. So as we've gone over in previous podcasts, the ability to label and describe emotions and feelings gives you power and control over them, okay? So emotional sobriety is becoming the observer behind this thinker. Behind this thinker, so most people for that's a that's a difficult concept to comprehend because in here in, in our Western society we believe that thinking is everything, right? We believe that thinking is everything. So how often have you been able to think your way out of depression or think your way out of anxiety? It's very difficult. So what we do is when we become this observer, this observer is not judgmental. This the this 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 observer is emotionally stable this emotion this, this observer is emotional sober so it's able to observe non-judgmentally this thinker that gets dysregulated inside of us and it's the thinker that becomes dysregulated that lets our emotions become overwhelmed right mm -hmm. uh-huh so when when you say calm down if you say what what when you when we help somebody calm down here when we help someone de-escalate what generally do we do alex some deep breathing mm -hmm. and mindfulness practices mm-hmm mm -hmm. Okay, what, what are some of the other signs that... Uh... So we have a decreased likelihood of becoming a victim to strong emotions, which is what we were just talking about, either positive emotions or negative, not getting too, too into any particular emotion. Mm -hmm. So what we, well, well, how about you? What, uh, what type of, uh, have you seen methods that we use to help people de-escalate? Like she said, the mindfulness, um, I know sometimes with our art intern, we do some art therapy and that helps people de-escalate too, just to get things down in writing or be able to express their emotions another way than just verbally. So children are one of the, children are one of the uh, biggest things that would help we deal with emotional sobriety. So you've often seen children act out in emotional ways, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's, a, there's a scientific reason for that, and we'll talk a little bit about that right now. So remember, the amygdala, which is kind of the pleasure brain, the prehistoric brain, is fully formed at birth, okay? So that, that, that has to do with feelings and thoughts and actions and being uh, aware and being vigilant about what's going on in your life, okay? So the hippocampus, which is a more modern development, generally doesn't, which, which processes uh, good memories and being able to regulation emotion, or generally isn't developed until a, until a child's four or five years old. Okay, so you've seen you've seen children develop with emotional scenes at cash registers. Mm -hmm. You've seen children with emotional scenes when they want something. Mm -hmm. My uh, my own granddaughter will lay flat on the ground and become stiff as a board, and, and, and scream. Okay, because she's not able to be emotionally regulate, and that that uh, often lets parents become emotionally unstable also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the idea is that when we're emotionally stable, that means we're not judgmental, and we have an understanding, and we're emotionally when we're emotionally sober, we approach life with a mind of awareness rather than a mind of the unknown or a mind of fear. Okay, so how do how do we how do we accomplish that? What are some of the ways that people develop emotional sobriety, Alex? Mindful meditation, which we talked a little bit about, is a good way to allow you to live in the moment and focus on the here and now and recognize those emotions. Mm -hmm. um, facing and overcoming challenges, so when you're able to make it through those challenging things and maintain your emotional stability, you have a chance to grow and develop that maturity that will lead to your emotional mm -hmm. sobriety. Keeping a recovery journal can be helpful too to kind of watch your own growth and see how you progress. Spending time with people who are already emotionally sober, um, they'll help you be able to regulate mm -hmm. your emotions. So when we're talking about a recovery journal, quite often what we do is we ask people to keep thought journals, do we not? Yes. So to you, what would be a thought journal, Lauren? Just writing down any random thoughts you have throughout the day, maybe your emotions whenever something comes up that upsets you or makes you very emotional. So this is my challenge to everyone out there. If you'd like to be, if you'd like to approach emotional sobriety, if you'd like to approach emotional stability, we have you have to learn how to label and describe those emotions. So when we ask people to put them on paper, I'm suggesting that you not do it on a word processor. Word processing is so impersonal, isn't it? 
where you just you type and these, these these things come up on the screen. It, it means really nothing. When you take a, and I suggest not even a pen, take a pencil in your hand. Put it on a piece of paper and actually write these things. Take these, and this is a challenge out there for everyone. Take these thoughts out of your head, being accurately able to label and describe emotions, and write that, write your thoughts out. I think you'll find that during the day, uh, when people have racing thoughts, it's generally five, six, or seven thoughts that keep repeating like on a hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. we, we just keep ruminating over the same set of thoughts. And when we take them out here and put them down here, and to be able to do that, we need to be able to label and describe them. And here at Seclair, what we do is we have a list of feeling words. Actually, there's five or six pages of uh, feeling words. And if you're seriously interested in becoming emotionally sober, if you're seriously interested in getting involved in your life, then please contact Seclair, and I will send you a list of feeling words, which will help you label and describe things. Okay. Would you like to be emotionally sober? Would love to. Mary, would you? Okay. Would you like to be emotionally sober? Be nice. How would how would that help you in your life? Easy to say. Just help you get through challenges and mm -hmm. work through daily life. Right. So call off into sometimes overwhelming emotions uh, distract us from what's right in front of us. Probably several times a day. Mm hmm. Okay, so this is the challenge for everyone out there. I know that we had a little bit of fun when we started uh, by wearing these wigs and taking things from another perspective. What I'd like you to do, I, this, is, this is a challenge out there for everybody. This, is, this, this, this isn't just a podcast where we'd say nice words and uh, da 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 and be nice and uh, be mindful and sitting on a nice pillow and having all types of candles around us. This is a challenge everyone for out there to get involved in their life. There's a, there's a also, there's an impactful mindfulness impactful mindfulness and in some following podcasts we're going to talk about impactful mindfulness we're going to talk about living out life out loud we're going to talk about being in every moment and living in every moment so as every podcast we often give a uh, free prescription do we not alex we do you remember what it is turn off the tv fruits. yes fruits, fruits nuts, nuts, and nuts and vegetables what else for a fish and mindful experience fish without bait. For a truly mindful experience, we fish without bait. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television. It serves no useful purpose. Take some fit time out to go fishing, and for a truly mindful experience, I ask that you fish without bait. A lifetime without definitive expectations, where you walk through your life emotionally sober, able to participate in your life on a meaningful basis. Until then, namaste. We're so glad you joined us today. <laughs>